Today, we're going to be discussing the potential that Barcelona has to become an international hub of advanced analytics and big data. We're going to be seeing what are the strengths and the weaknesses, the opportunities and threats of Barcelona fulfilling that potential. We're going to have two complementary views on it, one from the research part from Pep Martorell and the other one from the business side of it with Oscar Sala. I hope you enjoy the video. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this new BCN analytics session. Today we are here to discuss if Barcelona can become a hub for advanced analytics and big data. So for those of you active in Twitter, please use the hashtag BCN hub. And the topic today is really resonating on us on BCN analytics, because when four years ago we said we want to create BCN analytics, the main purpose or our main dream was to help Barcelona to really become a European hub for analytics. So it's good to reflect on that today. In BCN analytics, we believe Barcelona can actually become a hub for analytics. Three main reasons. The first one, business-wise, we see an increasing number of business building data teams in Barcelona. And we are talking about companies who have been in Barcelona for a while, La Caixa, Vistaprint, you could name many companies. We're also seeing a blooming environment of startups. And in previous events, we're having here some startups presenting. And I'm sure in the next talk, we'll hear some specific data. But more and more startups are really being created in Barcelona. But even players who have an international presence, Amazon, Yahoo, Zurich, they are really building data teams here in Barcelona. right? So I think the signals from business-wise are really that Barcelona is a relevant city in terms of data. That's in the business. Second data point, universities and talent. We see education really investing to prepare data scientists. More and more universities are bringing data scientists. But not only that, we see programs. It could be three months programs, six months programs, nine months programs. So different programs really taking people, not really working in data, and offering them and preparing them to become data analysts, data scientists. So it's really uh, educational-wise, we also see an increasing number of signals. And last but not least, in the city, and we talk about the public sector, and even the city, we see also some good symptoms. One thing, we have plenty meetups on data. We have here Adriana from Data Beer, so is one of them, but we also have Data for Good, recently launched and with a more non-profit approach. We have machine learning groups. So we have plenty of meetups. So I'm sure that if you want to attend a meetup on data in Barcelona, you have an opportunity almost every week. That's good. That's great news. But also, it's not only that these events happen it's from a public administration. I think we are moving forward. Don't get me wrong. I don't think we are yet there, right? So we cannot say, hey, we are like London or other American cities. But when thinking about Barcelona, I see that some open data initiatives are, start, are starting to have some traction. Again, we are still halfway, but we see public sector really also thinking, hey, data is relevant, having this open data is relevant. And therefore, Barcelona, business-wise, educational-wise, and let's say an events public sector-wise, is a city that is really becoming relevant in this data journey. So today, we will have two great speakers, and later on they will be introduced. And these two great speakers are Pep Martorell from Barcelona Supercomputing Center and Oscar Sala in representation of Mobile World Capital Barcelona. So they will bring some data and some thoughts on this question if is Barcelona really a hub for analytics? As usual, after their presentation, we will have Q&A. My colleague Pau will start the questions, but I really encourage you all to raise questions. This is really about discussion, about having a good conversation. So don't be shy. So raise your hand, ask your question, and let's ensure we have a nice Q&A session. After that, as usual, we will have beers. I remember last time, some of you were here. We were making the Q&A that long that we no time for beer. So today we will be more uh, strict than that, because I know some of you come for the beer. So no worries. You will have the beers. Um, before getting into today's session, just a, snap, a couple of remarks. I know it's today is January 21st and we are having this event, but we are already working in the next event. And that uh, event is already created. It's going to be February 14th, Valentine's Day, so we could celebrate love all together that day. We are having a great topic. We, will we are really lucky because we will have here Sergi Oliva. Sergi Oliva is Senior Director of Analytics and Strategy from Philadelphia 76ers. So for those following the NBA, uh, you know, obviously, the team. 
Uh, the guy is usually in Philadelphia, but we are lucky to have him his day, this day here with us, so I encourage you to register to our event. So if you go to our site, bcnanalytics.com, there's a, um, an article explaining that, and you have the event right to register, so again, rush if you want to uh, save your seat. So February 14th, save the date. And before starting the session, just big thanks to our sponsors. First of them is Shipstead, the company behind Photocasta for coaches, Infojobs, Vivo. So thanks to them, we are recording these sessions. And later on, uh, anyone here or not being here can watch the sessions. And also, if you miss any uh, of our previous sessions, go to our YouTube channel, and you will see the previous sessions where we had other speakers. Also, big thanks to Movistar Centre. Thanks to them, we are having this place together, this venue. And also, Estrella Dams, thanks to them, we have some beers. Uh, which is good. Uh, so, with no further delay, let me ask my colleague Pau Agullo to come to the stage and he will be handling the rest of the meeting. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Manel. Thanks, Manel. Um, yes, as you will have figured out, um, PCN Analytics is the way in which we bring like our professional life and our passion together. And yes, we're passionate about Barcelona and personally about the NBA. So that's why I invite all these people over. Um, so um, we're hoping you will like it. So let's focus on today's, um, on today's presentation. Um, we have two guests that are complementary to each other. Uh, we will have Josep Maria Pep Martorell, who is, will bring more the research part of it, and um, spoiler alert, um, uh, we will uh, be discussing how lucky we are to have the Barcelona Supercomputing Center in our city. And then we will have Oscar Sala, who will be bringing us how we get all these good ideas and all this research into tangible technological companies that add value. So, um, so this is the plan for the day. So with no further delay, let me introduce Pep Martorell. Um, he is the Associate Director at Barcelona Supercomputing Center. Uh, this is Spain's leading and one of the Europe's leading um, supercomputing centers specialized in high performance computing. Um, at the same time, Jose Maria has a uh, strong background in research, both from the uh, Generalitat de Catalunya, Catalan government, and uh, university. He was head of research at the Ramon Llull. Uh, at the same time, he's shareholder and advisor to multiple technological startups, so he can also contribute to the how to bring this to practice. Uh, so, um, please, um, let's welcome uh, Pep Martorell. Can you hear me fine, well, yeah? Okay, thank you very much, Paul. Okay, well, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. I'd like to begin by saying that, uh, as Paul has said before, in fact, I live in a wonderful world which is called academia. It's a universe which is a bit far from the real world, which is your world. Yeah? So the first thing I have to do is just a bit sorry, because I will come from the basic research world, from the frontier of knowledge, and trying to connect with Oscar, which will come after me, uh, talking about real things, talking about the, the real world. Yeah? So let me begin by... Uh, just talk to you about the evolution of the research paradigm, the evolution of the way in which we conduct research. I, will, I would like to share with you my first part, some general remarks about the contribution of the BSc, not only to research, but especially to these data analytics hubs we would like to build here in Barcelona. And on the second part, I would like to share with you which will be our contribution to the incredibly ambitious European policy in advanced computing, which I will introduce you later. And I think it would be the best uh, way to connect with the second talk today. About the research paradigm, it's pretty easy. In fact, what we always explain is that many decades or even centuries ago, you could do, let's say, frontier research with some basic tools you almost did at home. It was not really easy, not expensive, to conduct experimental science. But today, this is a photo of the a Large Hadron Collider in Geneva. Conducting experimental research, it's not easy, it's very expensive, it's complex, it's difficult, and you cannot escalate many of the procedures if you have to go through experimentation. Our proposal, our proposal and the proposal of all the supercomputing centers in the world, 
is why not using numerical simulation, data analysis, and so on, to complement this experimentation just to make progress in some scientific fields. For instance, today what we called uh, HPC, which are the initials for high performance computing, advanced computing, it's not only a field of research by itself, it's also an enabler to make more progress conducting research on engineering, astrophysics, climatology, bioinformatics, life sciences, a lot of uh, scientific fields, where it's difficult today to find a top-notch world-level project, research project, without using these high-performance computing resources. So taking into account this fact, let me explain you a story. 15 years ago, more or less, our three current trustees, the Spanish government, the Catalan government, and our university, Polytechnic University, created a public consortium called Barcelona Supercomputing Center and gave us three main missions. And let me go through these three missions just in order to explain you which are our contribution to this local hub. The first mission is to give services. To give services to every European researcher that needs a supercomputer to conduct their research. I would like to explain you how we do this immediately. Our second uh, mission is to conduct research, to conduct R&D, to do the research in computer sciences, other fields. And our third mission is to transfer knowledge to the society. We do all these three missions today in an institution which has about 37 million euros as an annual budget for the last year, where we work about 600 people, most of them scientists conducting their projects regarding high performance computing. All these people come from almost 50 different countries, average age 34 years, so maybe we are pretty similar than some of your uh, private companies. We are trying to be a very dynamic, international, open scientific institution. Uh, let me focus here, let me highlight here, maybe one of the first contributions we can make, we make to this uh, local data hub. As you can see here, this is, whoops, the contribution of our trustees every year. They gave us every year 7 million euros just in order to fulfill our missions. And we are able to raise Leveraging these millions, more than 20 million euros from competitive fund, European Commission, private companies, local agencies, and so on. All those money is devoted to hire, to contract young, talented people. In fact, to create high-level technological jobs. So probably one of the first contributions we are making to our local environment is this one. Just to be able to attract a lot of people from all over the world, especially Europe, paid by competitive funds, no, from our governments, from private companies, European Commission, and so on. And all these people, or most of these people, after two, three, four years in our center, goes to other institutions, to other companies in our city, in our environment. So we like to say that we are something like a tenant, anchor tenant, attractor of talent that we then uh, pass to the, rest of the, to the rest of the system. Our first mission I've referred before is to give services to researchers. I'm not going into technical details. I'll, maybe many of you will like to discuss this after uh, with the beers, but I think I understand that today the objective is not to do a talk on supercomputing. But just in order to uh, share with you that we have an not only beauty, but incredibly useful machine for researchers. It's a computer. Uh, with a bit more than 160,000 processors, um, mainly Intel Xeon, devoted to science, with a peak performance of 3.7 per 10 at 15 operations per second, which is something incredibly uh, amazing and very useful for our scientists. But the thing I would like to highlight for you is this thing. We are seven supercomputing centers all over Europe, one of them in Barcelona, and we all work together to fulfill our first mission, which is give services to researchers. You are a professor, you are a researcher in any of the European universities or research centers and need a supercomputer to run your code, to research, no problem. You can write a project, send your project to this web page you have here below, and every three, four months, all Europe evaluates your project, and if your project is well-ranked, you obtain access to one of these supercomputers. This is one of the great success 
of the European scientific policy, to give to our researchers the opportunity of having access to some of the most powerful computers in the world. This is our first mission. Our second mission is to conduct research, research in many fields related to advanced computing. Computer sciences, almost 200 people working in this field. How to design, how to build, how to program the computers of the future. In a moment where there's a lot of problems regarding artificial intelligence, all the big data issue, nothing that they can explain nearly to you, but we are working in this department how to design not the computers today, but the supercomputers of the next five, 10 years. Life sciences, meaning mainly personalized medicine. So going from trying to discover the cure for a disease to trying to know how to solve the problem of the individual patient. Leveraging all the data of this patient in order to fulfill, in order to reach the best treatment for this patient. This is another contribution we would like to highlight. None of these projects we conduct alone. It makes no sense when you live in Barcelona and around you there are a lot of amazing biomedical research centers and research hospitals. So another strength we have for being here and not in another city is to, take, to make profit of all these excellent biomedical centers we have in our city. We, with them, join together. We work in most of these projects. What do we contribute with? Our supercomputer, our algorithms, all our programmers, all our researchers in computer science, which is their contribution, patients, data, medical imaging, and so on. There's no more cities in Europe with the capacity that Barcelona has in all this field of personalized medicine, bioinformatics, and so on. We also conduct research in health sciences, mainly climatology, from how to predict, how to forecast the weather in some decades for the United Nations Observatory to discuss what about the um, quality of the air in our city in two, three days. This is another contribution we can make to the city. And also in what we call computer applications, which is mainly engineering. This is the most, uh, let's say, company enterprise oriented department in, in our center. If you take everything into account, my first idea is that we conduct research with an enormous amount of projects running uh, currently, funded by all the competitive agencies you, you can imagine. So the, our first mission is to give, to serve researchers that need a supercomputer. Our second mission is to conduct research, mainly funded by external sources. Our third mission is to transfer knowledge to the society. And in this third field, and we, here we are in touch with what Oscar will explain, we think this is another contribution we can make to our local environment. With all these multinational IT companies, we have, we have joint research labs. So the company established their research priorities. We establish our research capacities. Let's say where it match, and then we open a joint laboratory. With all these companies, we have a joint laboratory in the north campus of our university. And this is another way in which we help also the local community by attracting all this international uh, investment in technology. We are trying also to do something like this with local companies. I must say, and probably you've also suffered before uh, this feeling that it's pretty easy to agree something with some of these companies than with some of these companies. It seems not easy at all to convince our local companies how important is innovation, technological innovation, and so on. But we are making relevant progress with some of these partners. And we even, another contribution we try to do for our local system, we even are beginning to generate new startups, new spin off entirely based on our technology. But this is an interesting way to transfer knowledge to the society. When you're leading, when you're uh, working with a technology which is pretty mature, TRLs around six, seven, eight, uh, it makes no sense for us to continue doing research there. So the best thing is to create a spin-off, transfer the technology, and let's say what the market says about this, about this technology. So this is in just 10 minutes 
what the Barcelona Supercomputing Center, what we are doing here in this city, and which are our contributions to the, to the local system. I'm trying to, to be very brief, very fast. Let me open the second part of my talk by talking about uh, what's happening around HPC, around advanced computing in all over the world. The first thing I would like to say is that uh, there's something like a global war around HPC, around supercomputing. Why? Because mainly, as the Americans like to say, who doesn't compute, doesn't compete. And this is true, of course, in science. Those countries, those scientific systems that don't have access to top-notch supercomputers cannot compete at the world level in scientific performance. They cannot. So the Americans have really clear that who doesn't compute, doesn't compete. This is the member of the uh, House in charge of the committee dealing with the technological issues in the American Congress. And you can see what, what he says. Three years before, uh, the European Commission realized that there were such this, let's say, war in academic terms, trying to develop everybody in the world new domestic technology relating to computation, and the president of the European Commission made this sound pledge by saying that in 2020, Europe has to have at least one on the top three supercomputers in the world. Well, this has been evolving during the last years. This is Andrew Zansip, the former first minister of Estonia, when Estonia did this amazing digital revolution some years ago. Today, he's the vice president of the European Commission in charge of digital affairs. Uh, he came to our center just one year ago, more or less, and he was insisting on what I've said before. Who doesn't invest in supercomputing, in supercomputing, cannot be in a position to compete in the global stage. Okay, which is today the scenario in terms of the supercomputers in the world? Uh, this figure is uh, really a bit scary, but the only thing I would like you to take a look is in this column, just here in the middle of the screen. Where is the country where these computers are today? This is the last list of the most powerful supercomputers in the world. Every six months is updated. Yes, you can go to the top 500 list, which is something public on, on the internet. And you can see the first machines, US, US, China, China, Switzerland, which we can discuss if it's Europe or not or whatever, US, Japan, Germany, US, 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 South Korea, Japan, Italy, France. So it's pretty clear that Europe is not leading this list, especially if you take into account what really counts, which is the maximum of the velocity, and then you can see how it goes down. We are right now on a 25th position in the worldwide ranking. Yeah? So what's happening today? around this weakness of Europe in the global supercomputing environment. The European Commission has realized that something has to be done, and probably a good model to do something is what Europe did before with some long-term strategic projects, some flagships. Probably many of you know about Airbus, the way in which Europe let's say, that uh, pushed for the creation of a giant in Europe just to compete with Boeing, with uh, the public policy and public money as the main driver to pull out this amazing project. Well, now the European Commission is pushing what, for what they call EuroHPC, which is this new amazing initiative. We are talking about an initiative, a joint initiative between the European Commission and 25 member states with a global budget from now to 2026 of 3 billion euros, 3,000 million euros. It seems that this time now, yes, this is a real commitment from our governments. And this project has two main objectives. And I will talk a little bit about the two objectives, and with this I will finish my talk. The first objective is to deploy across Europe world-class HPC and HPC machines. So in the next year, the European Commission wants to be sure that the European researchers have access to 
the best possible supercomputers in the world. This is the first objective uh, of this year HPC joint undertaking. The second objective, and I will talk a little bit about this because it's very important, is to develop European technology on advanced computing. If you come one day to our facility to visit our Marinostrum supercomputer and you take a look to the technology that is there in our chapel, you will see American technology provided by IBM, uh, NVIDIA, and Intel. Japanese technology provided by uh, Fujitsu. And Chinese technology provided by Lenovo. You won't find any European technology there. Because today, we have no European providers fully competitive in advanced computing. On the first objective, deploying world class machines in Europe. This is the roadmap for US, China, Japan, and also now Europe. The challenge is to reach the exascale. The exascale is 10 at 18 flops per second, so operations per second. It's something like 100 times more powerful than the supercomputer that today we have in Barcelona. US, China, Japan will reach this objective by 2021, more or less. And now, with this new project, European Commission will reach this objective in 2023. So it's not bad at all. At least we have a roadmap, we have a budget, we have a plan. That's fine. One or two more years, it's not a problem in this field. Previously to these exascale supercomputers, the European Commission would like to launch two what they call pre-exascale computers, so two enormous machines that will be hosted by two European institutions with the high expertise in supercomputing, which is the role of Barcelona in all this map. The role in Barcelona should be this one. Sorry for the, your people, which I think you, you, you cannot see well this, but this is our commitment. Try to win the competition because this is a competition. In fact, uh, the competition has been open officially today. If you go to Twitter, and go to Roberto Viola's account. Roberto Viola is a DG for Digital Affairs of the European Commission. You will find the announcement of the open call for this practice scale machine. So we will try to compete to attract one of these machines to our city. Let's see if it happens. If it happens, in 20, this is the roadmap, in 2021, we'll have probably one of the four or five most powerful machines in the world here in our city. So this is our commitment. This will be our contribution again to this uh, local hub. Let me go and finishing with this to the second objective of this enormous, this really ambitious project. The first one is to deploy top-notch computers in Europe, for scientists mainly. Our second objective is to develop technology, to develop domestic European technology. This is a, a slide uh, I've taken from the ICT day in Vienna last December, uh, the typical ICT event organized by the European Commission. And the idea here is very simple. If you take a look to all the components of a supercomputer, you will figure out that you have European providers for almost everything, but for general purpose processor, not accelerators. You cannot purchase today low power high efficiency chips nor accelerators to a European company today. We can discuss maybe if Atos Bull is able to provide some of these services, maybe yes, but we don't have, you don't have a strong ecosystem of companies providing European technology on this field here below. Uh, and why would we like to have European companies providing domestic technology to supercomputers in Europe. Is this a matter of political issues? Is because the people, the, the politicians at the European Commission would like because of some type of European nationalism or populism, make Europe great again or something like this? There's not a problem of that. It's a problem of being technologically independent. Four years ago, Obama, uh, made a resolution banning Intel to export the last high power chip to China 
because of political reasons. Of course, after two years, China answered by developing themselves this chip. But probably Europe is not able to do this in two years. We would need more than two years, of course. So it's really likely to think in, an, in a future where a president of the United States can forbid European companies to export the last technology outside the frontiers of the US. I don't know if it's probably if it's likely or not, but of course it's not impossible at all. And what would happen then? Well, the first conclusion would be that our scientists cannot access to the most powerful supercomputers in the world. And this is a problem for the competitivity of our science. But this is not the main problem. The main problem would be for our industry. Ask to those people you know working, for instance, in automotive companies, how many processors will BMW, Renault, Volkswagen, Peugeot, wherever, will need to purchase in seven, eight years for their cars? Dozens of millions. But what happens in 10 years if these companies cannot have access to the most powerful technology in the world because of political reasons? We need to be, as Europeans, technologically independent. At least, we need to guarantee that our companies in the near future will have at least one European provider when they need a chip, an accelerator, a general purpose processor, wherever. Intel is fantastic, NVIDIA is awesome, Fujitsu develop very high quality chips, that's fine. We would like an open market, but we like also European competition there. And which will be the role of Barcelona in all this competition to develop European technology? Well, a pretty interesting role. We are leading, at least the academic part, was a very, of a very ambitious project trying to develop European processor, European accelerator technologies in the next four or five years. It won't be easy at all. It means a lot of research, a lot of technological development. But we think we will reach our objectives and Barcelona will have really an important role on all these issues. We are working on this in a pretty ambitious consortium with Atos Bull, with other important universities, with BMW, Calray, Electrobit, Infineon, a lot of technological European companies. And we will like in 2022-23 to already provide European technology, as much as European technology as possible, as we like to say, to the next supercomputers that we'll install in Europe. So let me finish just by going uh, to the beginning, and I hope I, I, I close here my talk. Who doesn't compute, doesn't compete. And this is true mainly for scientists, but this will be true also for some of our industries in the near future, and to do this, and to fully compete with our colleagues in other countries, in our continents, we need our top-notch supercomputers and our domestic European technology. And from Barcelona, we are trying to contribute to this amazing project. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Pep. Uh, I think this was very inspiring, challenging. Uh, so thanks for the talk. Let's move on to the second half of the, of the talk. Um, uh, we've seen more of the research. Uh, now we're going to be seeing, seeing more of the business side to it. So basically, we have an expert on innovation and how to bring scientific research into technological companies. So uh, we have the pleasure to have with us Oscar Sala. He is the M Ventures Director at the Mobile World Capital uh, Barcelona, which is a venture builder program that addresses the challenge of transforming scientific knowledge into technological solutions. Um, Oscar has also been working and has held multiple positions both in technological companies or large uh, um, banks like Caixa Bank in innovation positions. So um, yeah, let's welcome Oscar. Oscar, welcome. Hi all, good afternoon. It works fantastic. Okay. Thanks, Pau, for and congratulations for this great event, for organizing this great event. It's really exciting to have one, one, one meeting every three months, no? more or less. If you, you were talking to me, 
before. I think it's, it's great to have an event in Barcelona. In Barcelona, it happens a lot of things, right? Where people can share knowledge, have share experiences, and it's the way to make things happen, right? It's really exciting what Pep has shared with you. Pep, it's, I'm really so impressed every, every time I listen to the things that they're pushing from the BSC. And I'm one, as Pau was mentioning, I want to bring to the stage a different angle. Okay, what, what happens after uh, basic research that really works very, very well in the university in our ecos Spanish and Catalonian ecosystems. But to be very honest, and, and, and the research, and please, Pep, correct me if I'm wrong, research are measured in a, in a, la, in a scale it's called TRL, technology readiness level. It's, it works similar to a, a register scale where uh, it depends in the, in the first and the eighth in the register. Okay, it's when there's an earthquake, it's really, an, an accident is really terrible. And the first is an earthquake, there's, there's no, nothing happy, not happening, okay? In the research, it's the same. In the basic research, the scale starts at one, it's TRL. From one to three, in the, our research ecosystem is working very, very well. We are, I'm going to give you data on about that, that we are top 10 worldwide, our ecosystem. But when we arrive at the TRL level, TRL line, uh, corporates that adopt this research are working on nine and eight, nine, ten. Okay, right. So one, two, three is TRL that is a research on the laboratory where researchers and universities are working very well. But there's a big gap between the research that are related in the laboratory, but they are, in, they are not mature enough to solve real market needs. And this is where our program wants to help there, right? But be, before going ahead, I want to bring some, some examples. What, what, how do we think? And what's the objective is to transform the scientist's knowledge, the scientist's excellence knowledge into real market solution. But before than that, let me share with you. It works, OK? First of all, I'm very proud to work in the Movago Capital, Barcelona. It's a foundation that the part of organizing very closely with our partners, one of our partners is GSMA. This is the Global Mobile Operators Association which provides, provides us global coverage. We are pushing a lot of different initiatives. And the objective of Mobile World Cup, first of all, we are a foundation, a foundation that we want to leverage the, the ingredients we have in our territory to push a digital transformation to improve citizens' life and to solve the industry challenge creating richness in our ecosystem, okay? This mission we implement in different lights, okay? First of all is talent. Talent is a magic word. It's great that we have good universities, good business schools. It's great that we are in a very competitive territory in Europe regarding to salaries, okay? That permits things happen. But on the other hand, and it's, it's the reason why it's plain that Amazon's coming, leaders coming, we have different big corporates, these labs are coming. But on the other hand, in the new era, new technology, we, we need different talent. And we need to train, we need to keep, we need to attract. So from our capital, we want to, to push talent, to permit, train people, train corporates. And we have different initiatives. One of these is digital, Barcelona Digital Talent. Is we, want, we created and we announced last November that in Barcelona we want to track people to make things happen, right, in the global, not only for today's needs, in the future needs, right? And on the other hand, we have another, co another program, it's called M Schools. It's a program clo uh, worked close, very closely with GSMA that let me share with you that we have trained 130,000 students, 17 years old schools. And instead of spending six months in, in one subject, I don't want to use music or sports because I always use that the example and I don't want to make friends today, right? But after six months time, we train them how to go to an iOS or one Android co uh, app and we train them how to develop their own business plan. Imagine if we're one of us with 17 years old will be trained. It's really a, an exciting program that we have trained 130,000 students in Catalonia, and we are pushing this kind of new knowledge, new abilities in other territories. Innovation, connecting entrepreneurial community. It's important just yes, to connect this ecosystem. I'm going to spend time later on that, because I'm leading these innovation programs in the mobile capital. 
uh, technology. If we want to make things happen, we need to push. And we are nowadays using technology in two different programs. First of all is the lab. The lab is a social entrepreneurship program where we are pushing how technologies and handheld social challenge. I don't know if we are talking about old people, we are talking about people that are not accessing, whatever, okay? And 5G. 5G, we are very proud in Mobile World Capital because thanks to all the things that are happening in Barcelona, and happen, Barcelona changed after winning the Olympic Games, no? <laughs> right? So since 92 to now, it happened a lot of things, right? And from Mobile World Capital, we have been asked to push this 5G development in Europe, and specifically uh, to convert Barcelona in a 5G, real, uh, in Barcelona 5G real, real living sector uh, lab, right? In this case, uh, for those of you who don't know what's 5G, 5G is a new mobile coverage technology that apart than being able to, to text your your family on the New Year's Eve, right? That's today, 4, 4G is not working very well, but a lot of people is trying to access to the mobile, to the mobile coverage, right? We permit to have objects talking to each other because an internet is about that. Internet when it started was about connecting computers. Facebook shared us that was about connecting people. And we are now learning how to interact with subjects, having real conversations with those objects. Data is about all that, okay, because we're talking about data. So from 5G in mobile world capital, we are, we are pushing three different initiatives to permit this kind of uh, activities. First of all, we, are, we launched in last November a national observatory was to, to share and to create hunger that what would be useful 5G for. First of all, secondly, working very closely with operators in, the, in this case, in, in where my program is based on, is in Tech City, one of the biggest uh, innovation hubs in Europe. It's very in front of the sea. I don't know if you, one of you, you haven't been there. If not, I recommend you to go to Tech City. I'm at your full disposal to organize you a trip there because it's something that's happening in your city. It's one of the biggest innovation hubs with more than 1,000 people working together in regarding to innovation creating in online services, uh, and there's a good combination between investors, corporates, for instance, global people, these kind of things are, are working in the same space. So we have, in regarding 5G, we have created 5G open labs. And the same that, you, that Steve Jobs made with Apple, you remember, 2007 that changed the world, that created an app store, democratizing this new way of doing things, okay? We are bringing open labs of 5G, offering real 5G coverage, 5G is not going to be on the market till in two years time. So we are now offering this 5G real coverage to permit people that want to develop their own solution. First, the 5G Europe is a consortium that we have identified 16 use sectorial cases involving the stakeholders each one. For instance, in one month's time in the next Mobile World Congress, we, are, we, we will share how with a hospital clinic, with a one MNO, one popular surgery, and us, we will help and share how, thanks to 5G, one surgery could be tele-assisted with, with, without being the surgery and the, and the patient at the same time. So we are working with a big stadium, changing what happens with one popular football player scores a goal to text and to, to improve customer journey. So these kind of things will, it's happening in Barcelona, right? And society. Society, and I think, it's not about data. Data is everything, it's everywhere, right? It's how to use data. We are now creating a society that technology are, is faster than regulators, the governments, corporates. So from mobile World capital, working very closely with governments, we, create, we, are, we created in November, they started a new think tank, very similar to a Davos forum, in the case is digital forum, inviting very short, a few, very few people, very few popular people, spending time and the kind of society we are going to build together. Okay, what will happen with our intimacy, what will happen with the government of robots, whatever. So it's what we make in, in Mobile World, Congre World Capital, apart from the Mobile World Congress for years for now, just to share with you that although our surname is Barcelona, 
we started the Amazon in February, we, before the summer we moved to Shanghai, and afterwards we moved to Los Angeles. So all these activities, we are working to create richness in our territory. So it's something that's it's really happening. So, so let me share with you, before going ahead in Collider, that we are living in a very sweet moment. We are living in a very sweet moment regarding the ecosystem, regarding entrepreneurs, regarding the investors. And this is a report that we, we this, you can download it on, in our website and we are going to update on, in one month's time, that want to reflect different things. First of all, on the left-hand side, you can see that Barcelona is in the, the fifth city in Europe with really good digital innovation hubs. And on the bottom line, you can, you can say that it's, there are different cities in Europe that are specialized in depending on the verticalization. Let me share with you that this is growing, growing, and growing. We are tracking investors, we are tracking up corporates, and I don't know if you're aware of, but recently a BC Boston Consulting Group announced a report where Barcelona is the five city worldwide, five city worldwide, I'm not talking about Europe, where entrepreneurs, where people want to come to live. So first is London, secondly Paris, third is uh, New York, fourth is Tokyo, afterwards Barcelona. So wow, why? The city, the weather, lots of ingredients, okay? And if we move to the right hand side, let, right, yes, okay, perfect, <laughs> right. Let me share with you that regarding to our, our startup ecosystem, in Bar Barcelona and Madrid, we have more than 60% of the 3,300 startups that we have in Spain. It's growing, growing, and growing. Where data is in all. And if you permit it, that all this report we made, we asking all the digital ecosystem, uh, and not only Barcelona, right? And there was a consensus, a typical 6% of communities said that in four years' time, 21% thought that Barcelona will become one of the most global flagship in AI. Let me share that we have the real ingredients to make things happen in this city, right? And let me share that it's not about data, because data is in everything. Our life has become digital. Our relationship are digital, right? And just to share with you, if you want to check it, just Google what happens in one minute in the internet, right? And what they're doing corporates to have a closer relationship with their customers, right? Everything is about data. So Amazon has said the digital hub in data. So data. So all this fantastic ecosystem where we are very good position from talent, from entrepreneurs, from investors, from corporates, let me share with you what's our, what is our program about and what is our objective and how want, why we want to push a problem is called Collider. It's not the Collider of Geneva, but it's very similar that in Geneva, at the end of the day, correct me if I'm wrong, Pleb, Collider in Geneva, what makes is the impact of combination of different particles, different speeds, but after combining, generate energy, no? Collider, it's, our branding is very similar, but in the case of particles, we are combining talent, different kind of people, because with all of teams, the first time that you create a team, there's a bit storm, no? And afterwards, people, emerging talent, uh, things start. So in from Arbo Capital, we found out that, and it's something that I was planning on the beginning, that regarding to the level of research, our universities, our papers, we are at top 10, top 10 worldwide. So we produce nearly the 3% of papers worldwide. But this excellence in scientists, the way we transform in real market solution, we are not go as good as our countries. And this is a good recombination of countries, Spain, Europe, and USA, the, the countries that are producing good research and they, are, they know how to transfer into real market solutions. Let me share with you that probably we are not working as well as other countries. Let me say, let me, 
put an example more concrete. It's on the bo right bottom line. One euro in our in research ecosystem is returns back into the market in solutions thirty thousand dollars. In the States, United States, one euro comes back seven million dollars. So the reason why we thought why not we help in this way and take that tech transfer. So it's the reason why we push Collider three years ago. And the objective of Collider is to fulfill the gap, to reduce the gap between this research that is mature enough not to working alone in the laboratory, I'm talking about TRL 3, 4, right? And bridge the gap and the, to provide them acceleration and to be mature enough to fulfill cor real corporate needs, right? In other words, we want to transform this research, this scientist knowledge into real market solutions. But the way what we thought was interesting to transform this this knowledge into real market solutions is reduced in three different activities. First of all is promote deep tech, working very closely with research centers, but before that work very closely with corporates, understanding very well what they have on the table. After understanding well what they have on the table, we can match one technology research with a real market need. First, promote deep tech in a real market context or real solu market solution needs. Secondly, talent. So researchers, entrepreneurs, corporates, they speak different languages. Okay? And on the other hand, if you, you want to make things happen, you need different angles on the same table. So we, have, it's the second activity of our province is of create, after selecting the right projects that covers real market needs, we create right teams to lead the projects. We are the Rosetta Stone of all these people, okay? And third is to help them to transfer innovation to the market, okay? To follow them up. And this, let me go ahead on the first bullet. Promote deep tech projects in the real market needs. On the other hand side, we are, we. As mobile World Cup, as you imagine, we are very good at involving very good corporates, governments, investors. We are proud to work very closely with the corporates and we are pushing the right sec the sectors where we can improve citizens' life for industry sectors. No? Again, the mission of the foundation, right? These sectors are se uh, health, energy, mobility, and industry. After understanding well with each stakeholders what do they have on their table regarding to the challenge and sectoral innovation, whatever, right? We involve in that conversation technology, researchers. But what kind of technologies or what kind of projects we push? We push the projects where our territory, uh, we have the right conditions to make things happen. And all, what, in other words, we are very good at digital solutions. In, in fact, it's something that probably you were reading on the papers recently, that the governments they have on their they have on their agenda that we are we have very good very large numbers or good possibilities to become a really digital valley in Europe. And not only in Europe. So we push and we connect technology projects with to cover real market needs. Selecting te the following technology areas. Internet of Things, virtual reality, blockchain, artificial intelligence, and nowadays 5G. But 5G is, is, like, is how to talk about in internet, it's everywhere, right? And to be very honest, I think in the future data is everywhere, okay? And after choosing the right technologies that match real sector needs, we create the right teams involving ta uh, entrepren combining entrepreneur talents and scientist talent to lead the projects. Let me put an example of the maturity of our ecosystem. Or let me put an example why, uh, in the numbers, why Barcelona is, a tr is really the city that everyone wants to live on. Last year, 
we had nearly 400 people that applied to lead one of our projects. 400 people that came from 41 different countries, 50% only from Europe. This year, this edition, nearly 100, 1,400 people from 65 countries. Again, Barcelona is trendy. Barcelona has, so we are able to attract right talent, right talent to lead projects, to create richness. So it's something really, really exciting was happening here. I think on, on, in the, after the session, we will spend some questions. If governments are, are working now in, in making a visa policies, visa regulations more flexible to permit, attract these kind of people, okay? And third, after promoting deep tech projects that cover real sector needs, secondly, recruit teams, how we transfer this innovation to the market in a venture builder program, okay? In we, we live during six months in our flat in the tech city. We have space for 100 people, so we create teams of three people. And comparing to other venture builder programs, the main differentiation, the main Differentiation of our program is first of all we are not working on seed we are working with pre-seed because we are we are introducing people to work to together to create a company together it's really really a talent program and the main differentiation is in 12 weeks in 12 weeks we have validated all the technologies with real corporates that are saying wow I want to validate this technology or not. So in, we are very good in a very few weeks to create a real market solution that is being validated from the beginning from corporates. From the mobile world capital, we create the context to permit things happen. What it means? It means to the seed capital, to, uh, to fund, initial funds to create the MVP, and a business planning to connect to the ecosystem. It means corporates, investors, whatever. Let me put two examples of the kind of initiatives, and I think it's my, not the last slide, but more or less, okay? What kind of projects come from our university? And I've selected two projects that's about data, but it's, to be very honest, 80% of our projects are about data. But data depending on how to use data, okay? But not only data. On the left-hand side, it's a company, it's called Sal Technologies, this using uh, earth sensors, geo sensors, combining with machine learning and data, and they are able to reduce 50% of engineering civil costs. This is a company that 15 months ago had the vision. They thought, an hypothesis, they wanted to validate it. They thought that most of big buildings, are, they, are, they are using a lot of materials just to prevent earthquakes. And the building, as a living structure, if you permit me, after building, there's no one who's analyzing how's the material, how's the, the air, blah, blah, blah. So these guys, we help them to validate this technology with Ferrovial, Acciona, OHL. It's the kind of companies we are involving in this conversation. And after validating, there was one company, it's called Themex, that invested in the company. They're using this technology in several countries in South America. And nowadays, they're bringing it to Europe, 15 months. But they were sustainable from the beginning, from the first month. On the right-hand side, another sector, health. This is a company that is six months old. Six months, no, not six years, six months, okay? This project came from CRM, which is on New University. It said, wow, we have one liquid analysis uh, staff that it works well but we do not we don't know what it's useful for it's the kind of the applied sector apply appliance of its research is something that normally happens in this very three tier three and four so in in February the last February we decide health why not we are able to apply this staff and why not if one single blood drop, we will be able to identify different health blood diseases 
reducing from one week to minutes, we think it would be a, we, it would be useful for. So this technology was related to Bang the Sang, Ficosa, Idneo, Clinic, combining two different things. First of all is one analysis fluids, and secondly is machine learning and big data, because it was not only about identifying patterns, anything health is comparing. The more people that you analyze, you train more the patterns on the, the algorithms, data analysis behind. Let me share with you that this company, after six months' time, and after involving different big players, investors, this company is able to reduce $4,000 million a year. How? So they are working with the same hypothesis, something validated in this market. They have selected blood transfusions, a market of 112 million euros transfusion, hey, 100, sorry, one, 112 million transfusions a year. Each cost of transfusion is $150. Apart than shrinking from away from minutes, these guys will reduce the 20 cost reduction of 20%. So it means that apart that bringing real solutions to improve patients' life and solutions for the health market, we will be able to reduce an important part to make this health sector sustainable. Is this kind of opportunities that we are helping to understand corporates that they have in the half and the half of an hour from their city, right? So on the last slide, current edition. Current edition we selected we selected projects from connected cities. Open data, citizens in movement, okay? We are, we have selected ten fabulous projects from 300 projects that we receive from our universities, projects that are from improved energy, industry, health, and mobility. In one month's time, in four years from now, I will share with you that I hope I, we will be able to, con to create most of these 10 projects, right? This is our program. Our program is able to convert these <coughs> scientist knowledge and real market solutions in very few months. What's happening today? Lots of corporates, want to work more closely with universities. Investors too. And in April, we will launch the next challenge of this new Collider edition. The edition is from October to, the, to June, more or less. I encourage you to join this program if you want to be an entrepreneur, and if you want to not to lose what's happening in your city, really, really it's an exciting initiatives that is connecting scientists and the market. Okay, thanks. Okay, um, thanks Oscar. Uh, I'm thinking that we will invite both Oscar and Pep in four years time, just to make sure that all these companies have been created and all these um, high speed uh, computing things in place. And if so, then we can celebrate and have a beer um, uh, to celebrate. Yeah. So um, I'm happy to start questions, but I'll... Uh, um, Anybody has a question for any of the two? Otherwise, I'll start, but I'm happy to open. Yep, so we have one here and one there. Maybe out of distance, we start there. And then, and then here at the front row. Hi, I'm Daniele from BSC. Uh, hi, Pep. Uh, so, <laughs> question to Oscar. You showed one slide, you know, the, this ranking of the cities. The top one is London. But now London, with all UK, decided to suicide somehow. Is this an opportunity for the rest of the cities in the rank, or is big deal also disaster also for the rest of Europe? I, I think we are moving into a world of regions, right? And I th at the same time, I'm saying that it is when you combine talent, things happen. I think we are in a good moment where combining different territories, specializing in different sectors, to work together, right? And it's true that London is very good at fintech. And on the other hand, let me share with you what I appreciated when we, you go abroad and we're traveling to Canada, wherever. After Trump, <laughs> or before Trump, London was a good bridge between the States and, and Europe. After Trump, the, this London is moving more to the Nordics, or other regions in Europe. But in any case, I think there are different waves. First of all, investors, no? or big corporates. In the case of Barcelona and the territory, we have talent, we have knowledge, and we have the ingredients to make things happen. And 
London first, London second, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, I think we have the good ingredients to make things happen and to be involved in, the, in big, big things. Okay? I don't know if I have answered you. We had a question here at the front. Oscar, my name is Kamaki. Hi, uh, my question, my name is Adriana. Uh, my question comes more like on the sense of like, both companies, both uh, speakers, sorry, uh, do address a lot the research side. The need of chips, the need of like more deep tech companies. But unfortunately, Spain is still have the number one product is Sun. So it's hard to have companies that truly come here looking for deep tech. It's amazing to have like, you know, a, a, a clean factory producing chips and everything. How can you respond that that company will be profitable producing chips, not only for one supercomputer, but selling abroad, being like the new Intel, like create an Intel in a company that only produce, in a country that only produce sun is tough. And at the same time, like, you know, having deep tech companies being created in here is amazing in a sense that you retain the talent and bring new talent. What you mentioned about like, you know, how this talent stay is complicated still. But also like, you know, how can you make those companies profitable that in some way they stay? Like, you know, most of the startups that we create here, we also ask them like, you know, if you want a round A, go abroad. You must go abroad. Put, put your, your, your you know, office, you need to be in Swiss. Or if you are a blockchain company, go there. And it's like, you know, so it's, it's this, you know, it's amazing having the idea of doing deep tech here, but how to sustain? Well, let me begin first, maybe. Uh, you're talking about how difficult it would be to create a new Intel in a country that really produces um, mostly sun. Uh, I would like to highlight two different elements. The first one is, uh, of course, this would be really, 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 diffi really difficult. But my point is that this city has the capacity or the capabilities to do this. This is something amazing enough to highlight. The second point is that, yeah, you, I agree. Uh, you're right. Uh, to create a new Intel or something like this, we would need a very different scientific and innovation public policy in this country. But it doesn't matter because my framework is Europe. I would like to contribute to create a new Intel in Europe, wherever it will be. Because I cannot stop myself by saying, oh, my government doesn't invest me, so we cannot do, no, whatever. That, that's not the point. The point is our natural framework is Europe. And if because of my research and my contribution in Paris, Dusseldorf, Dusseldorf, or whatever, whatever. A European company is created that can provide in the future European technology to my companies, that's fine, that's enough good for me. That's my point. Let me complement one thing. It's, I think it's not the question about be part of, all, or we assume all the value chain. Okay. If you talk about digital companies, you are right that probably sometimes, although we are pushing and uh, our ecosystem matter and matter every year, is that we want to organize a Syria A uh, or Syria B, or we want to grow sometimes there are countries or territories that are more attractive for companies to, to, to grow, right? And that at least in the digital, in the digital context, right? Uh, let me share with you that M Ventures was created four years ago with two objectives. First of all, is to push tech transfer, right? It's something I explain, really explained to you. And secondly, is to attract foreign investment to the city, right? We organized three, in three, two years an accelerator program where we create a portfolio of three, 30 companies that they are managed the portfolio and co investing with large corporates, large investors, and with companies that are popular and popular, right? But from mobile world capital, it's true that we are on the same region, it's not the same investment amount of money, investment numbers, if you permit, comparing to other countries, but our ecosystem is getting much and much. Uh, it's the reason why we're now pushing only tech transfer. Regarding your question about uh, what happens to hardware, more than chips, hardware, okay? To, regarding to Vernon cycle, uh, the, every technology, every industry is based on the right country. I think we are not the right country for the specific industries. But yes, to assume part of this value chain. If we are talking about to organize this research, 
of chips, and the BSC is a good example of that, of course we are good at that. But when you want to industrialize, probably after making research and putting on practice, why not to work with other countries? No? But, so I think it's, I think this, the, the, the world has become global, and it makes sense to have a whole company on the street, probably no. Okay? In digital, it's easier. In the case of hardware, probably we are very good at making research, but there's one point that probably other countries will be more competitive than us, producing large. No? Yep. <clears throat> more questions? I'm Harrison from Madrid. First of all, I'd like to thank you really for the very impressive talks, both of you. My question is also for both of you, but maybe more for Oscar. So, uh, yeah, but if you want to oh, answer, no, no, you are very <laughs> well. <laughs> uh, let me share with you that Pepe is one of the, our ambassadors in Collider. Yeah. So things. So. <laughs> okay. So again, for, for both of you, today just happens to be a huge day for Barcelona, not just for the talks, but also for the protests for the taxes mm -hmm. against Uber and Cabify. And this is a huge thing against that uh, entrepreneurship ecosystem because the. Uh, <clears throat> The economy sharing is a huge part of it. So my question is, uh, how much is the harmony between the whole ecosystem and the Spanish government, and how much unity in the vision do you think that both have together, and what needs to be done from both sides? Let me share that, first of all, is Rome was not built in one day. Okay, and I was mentioning before, sorry, apologize. Okay. Uh, technology is faster than regulators and corporates. Fro we are working very closely with Catalonia government, Spanish government, and they are people that are there. It's the time where people that had on the, the governments were not expert on that the, uh, material is something that was all in the past. Nowadays, we are in front governments that understand very well the opportunities, the cost of opportunity or non organizing regulation. These kind of things. An example of that, that they are pushing a new regulation of it, uh, startups, right? Uh, and they are want to change re uh, startup regulation, fiscality, taxes, and to transform the way of a whole government thing. Uh, but you need to understand that our current world is more than 2,000 years, and the digital world we are really in, in the 15 because 15 years old. So these kind of things you need to understand. It's not easy to transform these traditional sectors. And for the information I have, let me, let me share with you that we are in a good hands, although depending on the way, the week, we, uh, we are seeing things different in the, uh, on the papers, right? And they are, they are using and spending a lot of energy to find a midpoint between different sectors, different actors. It's, it's not easy. It's not easy. So, but I don't know, it's just to share with you that the, the information I have is they are working on that, they are an expert, they are expanding, they are, encouraged, they are encouraging to change the ecosystem, and they are succeeding, probably not at the same velocity or speed that you would like, of course, but things are happening every day. So it's step, step, step. Let me just, uh, I would like to tell you a short story which is applicable to the taxi thing, but also to science. Uh, ten years ago, more or less, the uh, Nature, the scientific magazine, published an article uh, called uh, Citizen Science. It was uh, an outreach article. And they tried to analyze many cities in the world, including Barcelona, and tried to figure out uh, which were the main elements for the perfect recipe to build a city that can produce science of top-notch level. Uh, at the end, they highlighted three main elements. What's um, funding, freedom, and lifestyle. For lifestyle, we cannot discuss about this in Barcelona, probably. But just to say that lifestyle is not only weather and sun. It's also a good level of our public hospitals and our public network of education and, and so on. By funding, it's true that uh, this past decade has not been the best for science in Spain. But mainly thanks to the European scientific policy, more or less, we can be pretty competitive to, our, to, to the other countries. And our main weakness is freedom. But not freedoms in terms of political issues, freedoms in terms of regulation. Freedoms in science means 
more flexible and open regulation. Mm. And probably this is applicable also to other, to entrepreneurship and to this new type of business. Also in science, our suffering here in Spain, our main weakness is not the lack of funding, mainly is the lack of an open regulation <coughs> for scientists in order to be able to attract people very fast from every place in the world, to pay them what they really need to be, he to be here, to create new alliances, to just move fast, in fact, as fast as our colleagues in other European countries. So everything about regulation, about freedom, also for science is one of the three main elements, just to become a city very vibrant in terms of producing of science. Yeah, so it's the same than the tax sector. Thank you so much. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I think we need to stop the debate here, um, but yes. but we can take questions on the networking afterwards. Uh, I would like to thank both uh, Pep and Oscar for sharing their knowledge and their expertise today. I think it was uh, very interesting to see both from the research part and how to make how to transform this scientific knowledge into uh, technological. Uh, um, companies that can that can bring value to society so um, so thank you very much for coming um, thank you. Thank you.